uh, Mike, let me ask you this. Um, so City and Liverpool obviously go into this this title uh, chase, right? There's got to be a little part of Liverpool supporters who are upset that City are in the position they're in, and there's got to be a whole heap of City supporters who are upset of the situation Liverpool are in because whilst both clubs are very happy with their stages of the career, like you would think that City want to be where Liverpool are. Do you think they would have given up that Premier League title to know they were going to play Tottenham in the in the final? Ooh. Um, probably because that's the one thing they haven't won. They I mean, haven't they've gotten, got, yeah. They've got Premier Leagues. They haven't gotten the Champions League. They've, they've spent a lot of money trying to win that Champions League. Premier League's almost like, you know, mundane for them at this point. So, yeah, I think they would probably have switched places. Uh, James, what do you think? Uh, yeah. If you're, if you're a citizen, would you? Uh... I, th- I think they probably would. And to be honest, I think the Liverpool fans would too. You know, they've won the Champions League five times, as they're so keen to remind us. Yeah, it's a, uh, it goes in reverse. But, you know, they haven't won the Premier League for 30 years, something like it. It's 29, I think. So... You know, I think they would have, yeah, they would have swapped too. Maybe they should just meet up at the end of the season and do some sort of exchange. Yeah. You should be able to make those, yeah, make those, do an exchange, it's like a hostage exchange. But with trophies. <laughs> so, yeah, congratulations to Man City on your fake overinflated commercial deals um, <laughs> on uh, on playing the FFP rules perfectly before they went into effect. Really uh, just want to send a shout out to Riyad Mahrez, who uh, succeeded. I mean, he was successful in his attempt to win a Premier League title get paid 11 million pounds for participating in a bunch of training sessions and, uh, and Carabao cup games. So, uh, so good for him. Mikel Arteta, I, I am happy for him, but, uh, you know, he was a good babysitter, he sat on the bench with a bunch of world-class players, kept them company every week, but, uh, but Liverpool not winning the title. You know, if we about- had hired Maketa, or, or Mate- Maketa. Maketa, uh, we would have won the league. I mean, that's what I'm hearing on Twitter. So. Clearly, I mean, he, he, he is the reason. Um, <laughs> Liverpool, you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk around with the Premier League trophy is, is what I'm <laughs> going with. And uh, that's a new hashtag for them. So um, so that is uh, pretty much a wrap-up on those games. The season's over. I'm not ready to start uh, to stop talking about it. But we're, we're, I'm trying to get Andy, trying to get him to free up from his social schedule to do one more pod. Uh, to review the entire season and the players, where we judge the players because we are so perfect ourselves uh, that, that we're in a position to do that. But um, we are now off to Baku. Oh. Uh, and by that, I mean 500 of us or so are going to be off to Baku. What a joke this final is. Uh, Ryan Fletcher asked a question in the pod, in the chat, uh, just you know what we think of the whole thing. 6,000 ticket allocation per team in a 70,000-seat stadium. No direct flights. That's not their fault. No flights under twenty five thousand quid uh, round trip. That <laughs> that kind of sucks. And zero hotel rooms left that don't have a donkey in them. Well, uh, so there is a filter on on uh, Travelocity that allows you donkey, no donkey. So someone brought up this point, and and I'll, I'll ask you two gentlemen because I'm kind of on the fence with it. So. You know, someone said, don't moan about the ticket allocation because at the end of the day, all the companies that pay for the UEFA to put on the competition, which in turn pay your players' wages and your TV rights, you know, they're the ones getting the tickets because they've fronted all the money, and that makes sense. Um, but what do you guys think about that? I mean, at the end of the day, they do the same in the Champions League, right? It's, it's minimum ticket allocation because everything else goes to the sponsors, and then sponsors will pay whatever for hotel rooms, so that gets jacked. So the fans get screwed here. Um, but is it fair to say, like, hey, the, the, the sponsors should be getting more tickets? I get at the end of the day we're getting a, a small allotment, but they are the ones technically paying the entire I don't know that we're even going to fill the allotment, though, because of the cost of going there. So the question really is about the whole, you know, wording of it to – and before we even talk about the other issue, but awarding it to to, uh, to Baku in the first place. But James, I mean, is this allocation a, a travesty? Well, I mean, far be it. It's not like me to defend UEFA, but I uh, I saw a story going around today that actually the, the, the part of the issue was that Valencia had indicated that if they made the semi, if they made the final, they would only be able to take up an allocation of two thousand tickets, and they wouldn't want to take any more. So. When UEFA sort of set these numbers, they have to factor in all the different clubs that could potentially reach that stage in their in their equation. I mean, yeah, I think the allocation is not great. I take the point about the money comes from sponsors, but ultimately, that sponsorship money is is 
is not shouldn't be buying seats it's it's buying brand awareness right you know it feels like a part of the brand awareness a part of what they're buying into is a showpiece occasion a showpiece final with a great atmosphere and unfortunately what is going to suffer because there aren't going to be enough fans out there is the atmosphere and it's going to be quite weird i think watching a a, fi- a big final which you know the vast majority of the crowd are going to be neutrals and probably not that you know particular about the outcome yeah i mean it, it, and as far as the the Mkhitaryan thing i mean we talked about this uh, in our last pod um but uh i mean it's just I don't understand how this, and I've been talking about it since the first time they went to Baku. I don't understand how this isn't a bigger deal. Uh, UEFA has said he can play, and the Armenian, uh, I'm sorry, the Azerbaijani sports, whatever, uh, football FA, has said that he is allowed to play. Would you know? Bravo to you for that. Well, it's because UEFA um, came in and said, if you don't let him play, you will be removed from all cup competition. That's my guess. But letting somebody play, a first of all, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, yeah. He's a registered member of, of the team that's in the final. B, it's the it's the sporting federation of, of Azerbaijan that's saying that. It's not the, the government of Azerbaijan. And although the government controls the visas and will give him one, they're apparently not guaranteeing his safety. And I don't know how you guarantee anybody's safety in this day and age, but... You know, it's just, it just doesn't seem like he's welcome. And, you know, there are some published, sub, some publications I've seen that whose headlines are deceptive, which is basically saying that he's set to miss it. I don't think he's going to miss it, but this is just more distraction than it's worth. What would happen if Chelsea and Arsenal were able to come to some sort of agreement and just boycott this game? I know that's unrealistic. I know it's naive, but would they move it? Would they, would Frankfurt win the Europa League by default? I mean, what, James, I mean, it, Am I a little too idealistic here? I'm not saying I think it's going to happen, but how can this be allowed to happen? I, I'm trying to think if there's any kind of precedent for that. Uh, I, nothing springs to mind. I suspect no new UEFA, they probably just would hand it, have the final between the other semi-finalists. <laughs> Valencia versus Frankfurt and see who they want to give it to out of that. And Chelsea um, shows up like, no, 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 we didn't really mean it. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, that's the thing. Ultimately, we got to be there because we need that Champions League place badly. Uh, so we are slightly, you know, uh, on the back foot there. The Mkhitaryan thing, it's really unpleasant. It leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, I think he will go, and I'm sure Emery will want him there, and I'm sure he'll want to be there. It just feels like something we shouldn't have to be talking about, and it's uh, something that should have been factored into the considerations when they chose the venue because you know they knew full well Mkhitaryan as an Armenian was taking part in this competition, and they still selected Baku as a venue choice, and I think that is really disappointing. You know, well, I, I see I, that I see that this written as fate is that he will score a goal. <laughs> and he will do some sort of Jaka Switzerland type of celebration to likely receive a full year ban next oh, year to oh, let yeah. everyone know that he is Armenian. What was that that he did? Oh, like some sort of like, like butterfly? The, the butter peacock or bird or something. But yeah, essentially at the end of the day, I think it's written in the stars. And, and interestingly, I know this isn't part of what we're talking about, but I just saw uh, this morning that uh, Real Madrid are set to announce the Hazard signing uh, yeah. Yeah. immediately after the final. So you know that between now and then, that's going to drum up way more press and there's going to be leaks coming out around that. So if it's true, and it's coming from L'Equipe in France, but if it's true, that's just drama on their side that they have to deal with. Um, but I suppose he's been saying it for years now that that's where he wants to go and it makes sense that's where he would go. But uh you know, that's that's negative press on uh, for them and their team. Yeah, distractions abound because when when a game starts so so long after the end of the, the Premier League season. 